Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I normally don't like to do direct product comparisons because I feel like they always end up on a really negative slant. And generally speaking, I know that there are a couple times there's some certain topics I feel very passionate about. But overall, I really try to be very industry positive because at the end of the day, this is all supposed to just be about having fun. And I kind of thought about it, and there's uh, I'm getting daily requests right now, really wanting to compare um, the things like the Rockwood Geo Pro to the Jayco J Feather Micro that I just did a sneak peek on recently at the time of this filming. Anyway, that'll become less true as this rolls on, obviously. And I don't like to do comparisons, but I kind of thought about it, and I think what I want to do here is really just focus on where they're different, not where this one's better than that one, just where they're different and help you understand how they differentiate from one another so that you know which of our offerings here at Halo RV work for you. Now, if you like content like this, if you like footage like this, let me know. And I might be um, willing to kind of delve into that a little bit more, but I will not fulfill request asking us to compare something we carry at Halo RV with something we don't, because that can only be one-sided, it can only be negative. I work very hard to present to you the positive qualities, the RVs that we carry here at Halitz. And well, if somebody else can't do that for their products, then either that product doesn't have redeeming qualities that work for you, or maybe they're a place that you shouldn't consider doing your business with. So more to the point, let's kind of stack up and look at how the Rockwood Geo Pro and the Jayfeather Micro compare to one another. Now, normally I would just walk right out and put hands on these things. However, at the time of this filming, we are completely sold out of. Our supply of GeoPros is exhausted because they're insanely popular, for good reason. They're awesome. And the Jayfeather Micro doesn't yet exist, other than that prototype. I had a chance to see that thing less than 24 hours after it rolled off the production line, but they're only just now starting to go into production. So, first of all, let's talk general construction. They're going to be very similar in this way. They're both using Asdell, but on the inside and outside of their wall construction. And that's an area where both of these brands are different from most other things in the industry. Most Asdell users are only Asdell directly below the fiberglass skin. The interior wallboard is usually still Luon. So that's kind of an exceptional quality on these. Um, that really kind of ties into keeping the weight down. And there's some other um, secondary tertiary benefits that go with that. Um, the Rockwood has an interesting seven foot, four inch body width. And the way that they generally accomplish that is roughly by having like a seven foot body, but the walls are kind of mounted outside that. It's it's supported by outriggers, but it gives a little bit more space than something else, uh, like a Wolf Pup or J-Flight SLX that you might find a true seven wide here at Halet RV. Um, the uh, J-Feather Micro by comparison has a full seven six wide body, um, similar to something like a Wildwood FSX that we would have here at Halitz. That little bit of extra space, it, two inches doesn't sound like much. It is a difference you can see in that product and you can feel the moment you step inside and especially considering these are really small box spaces, I think every little nudge of space has a very large impact on your perception of that. The hiccup here, and I will always try to be fair and say pluses and minuses. I'm not all just sunshine and roses with this. And if you appreciate that kind of no-nonsense transparency we have, do us a favor, click that subscribe button, follow our channel here, because we have a lot of really cool stuff coming this fall as the new RVs roll in. This, this season of updates is among the best I've ever seen. But um, the extra body width translates to a little bit more weight. That's a thing that you're going to find is that the Jayfeather Micro will weigh more than the Geo Pro. So if you're within a very specific um, tow rating, the Geo Pro may be a better fit for you. Generally speaking, a vehicle that can handle one can handle the other, but you might be kind of on those cusps, like if you've got that like 4,200 pound rated vehicle, a Geo Pro is going to be uncomfortably uh, within your tow rating. By that, I mean safe, but near the apex of your tow rating where a J Feather Micro probably going to exceed it by the time you load cargo in. The dry weight might slip under there, but with cargo, you're probably gonna be a little too much. And I do try to be real world about that. Um, similarly, the Geo Pro also has um, an interesting thing going on through sidewalls. It's only about roughly a 6'1 sidewall. It's a very short sidewall. 
but it has this extremely exaggerated like five inch roof vault. It's actually two, two and a half vaulted sections that dovetail together, almost like an expansion bridge actually at the roof. That's why there's that, you see a piece of trim, a seam going down the interior ceiling of the GeoPro. And it's all one piece exterior roof membrane, so it's not like there's an exposed seam on the roof to worry about. It works really well. It opens up the space, it makes it look and feel larger. It does leave the sidewall a little shorter, so you're gonna lose some cabinet space and some shower height. By contrast, the Feather Micro, something I think is cool, is it's a full uh, industry standard six and a half foot linear flat interior ceiling. It's vaulted outside, so it's not like it's just flat roofing. Now that means when the walls are taller, we can have a little more space for the slides, for the cabinets, and for me, the shower. And I really appreciated that aspect of it. Now, at 6'3", and for plumbing code reasons, you do always have to step up into the bathroom or the shower these things a little bit, but with the skylight, I can just straight stand in a Feather Micro. In a Geo, I am doing that a little bit. That being said, you're taking a quick cowboy camp shower, or whatever you want to call it, military shower, very quickly and getting in and out, in that size of trailer, it's an accommodation I'm willing to make, um, but maybe you're not, and that's okay. That's why we like having different offerings here at Halitz. But once again, that extra sidewall height on that feather, little bit of extra weight. Um, the uh, extra cabinet space that you'll get as a result also, another thing, a little bit extra weight. Something I think was, I, I think it might be a best in class feature. I'll have to do a little more digging before I just straight proclaim that but I, it, I know it's in the upper ranges of its class, and that is the freshwater capacity on those Feather Micros. Um, other than the 12-footer, which still has like a 25-gallon fresh tank, which is pretty good for a 12-foot box, any of your uh, other J Feather Micros have a, if not best in class, nearly 55-gallon fresh tank. Now, the Geos have a 37-gallon fresh capacity, which is, again, pretty good for a small camper, but that is something the Feather Micros did well. Again, there's a little bit more weight associated with that. Um, let's talk refrigerators. Uh, that's become a hot button topic recently, it seems. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize uh, maybe one of my previous videos might have pushed the go nuclear button on some fridge discussions throughout the RV industry, but I think it's really awesome that we're having the discussion. There's good points to be had every which way but loose. But moving forward, for the 2021 fall update, so like the late 21 Rockwood Geo Pros that are being produced basically at the time of this filming, they are going to a 12 volt fridge standard. It won't be optional, 12 volt fridge. It'll still be about the same size integrated freezer, but it will be uh, a 12 volt uh, compressor fridge, not passive absorption slow fridge, but fast fridge which I think a lot of people are gonna be excited with. And it just goes just hand in hand with the Geo Pro Solar Package that's already standard on those things. Um, Jayco did it a little bit different than their Feather Micro. They're giving you a bigger refrigerator. Their standard fridge is a six cubic foot two-way fridge, so 110 and uh, propane. You have the option for, it's like 20 bucks, it's like nothing, of upgrading to a 8.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge and freezer just like a full j feather non micro that's one of the things i like about this is it's not really a downscale in equipment from a j feather it's just a shrink in size that's all it is on these feather micros um that gives them some really impressive cold storage in this category with some of the floor plans also having a little outside fridge um and the 12 footer having one of those 12 volt um, fridge freezer chest jobs, which are awesome, by the way. Those things are great. Um, so your J-Feather does have bigger fridge capacity, but again, a bigger body size, adding a little weight to it. Rockwood does offer a propane oven option, which Jayco is not doing right now. So I think that right there, for a small number of people, will immediately be a make or break point. Um, we don't tend to put ovens in our little campers here at Halitz. In our Midwestern neck of the woods, we don't get a lot of call for that. I know there are definitely some places where people got to have their biscuits in the morning. We're going to bake some cookies. I totally get it. And that's one of the nice things about the variety of products we offer at Halitz. I still have something for you. Now, pretty much basically if it's on wheels, we have it at Halitz RV. Um, talking outside cooking now, Rockwood Standard kind of takes the cake with the um, Sunbeam griddle, which if you didn't know, those suburban Sunbeam griddles, they are literally an outsourced Blackstone. It's like the 17 inch Blackstone. It's exactly what it is. They just uh, allowed another company to build them. However, 
J Feather Micro, you can actually option in the actual Blackstone variety hardware. Um, I don't know that one necessarily works better than the other, but I know that there's something sometimes to be said for name brands. And Jayco's the first manufacturer to actually offer Blackstone uh, in their RVs. And you're actually going to see those Blackstones used in more than just the J Feather Micros, all the way up through like the, the Eagles and North Points and all these other things with their camp kitchens. They got some cool, exciting things coming down that pipe, actually. Um, windshield. This is, well, I, I'll say windshield or nose cap, nose treatment, because they both kind of do this a little bit differently. Rockwood does have a nose cap. They have a windshield in most of their models. There's a couple that don't uh, for some engineering reasons. Um, it gives them gorgeous curb appeal. They look so good. And actually, if you watch back through some of our older videos, we were the first dealer. Um, we custom ordered a 19FD Murphy Bed Geo Pro with a front windshield. And um, we were actually the reason that that is now an available option on the 19FD Geo Pros today. By contrast, the Feather Micro, they just do this awesome graphics package on the nose. They don't actually do a nose cap. They don't do a window or windshield. Um, I'll be interested to see if that persists long-term. And here's the thing, there are benefits both ways. I don't think that either Geo or Feather are superior in this regard. I think that they're really different. And overall, actually, I think that's the best way I can describe the two products. I don't think the Rockwood, I don't think the J Feather, the Jayco, I don't think either are better. I think that they just stack up differently. So um, that nose cap looks awesome. It doesn't make the RV function any better. There is cost associated with it. Um, and the windshield, who it looks good, and I love the light and the visibility in a small camper, but it's a huge thermal loss. People don't realize, I've talked about this in other videos, windows and RVs, they're like an R.7. There's not a whole lot of R value to be had there. So you're literally taking your entire R7 or 9 front wall, whatever it is, and just punching a hole in it, and there's not a whole lot of uh, protection you're offering it now. Now there's a shade you can pull over it. That will help. You could stuff Reflectix or a pillow up in there, sure, but at that point, haven't you just negated the whole point of the windshield? Maybe you enjoy having the option to put it up or down, but there's an argument to be had there, or I don't like argument, discussion. You get the point. I'm splitting hairs with the verbiage, but the Jayco just has a straight fiberglass nose swept wall. They're already a little bit heavier because of the body size. The nose cap would add a little extra weight and extra cost that you could, again, discuss has no um, functional value to it. And they're maintaining a better overall R value in the coach. So I think that each has um, a high point either way. I suspect long-term you will see something of some kind of window or windshield work its way into that Feather Micro, but certainly not for at least a year since these things are brand new, um, just because people really like the eye appeal of it. And frankly, it does look extremely, extremely awesome on that Geo Pro. Um, the roof is a different point of construction on these. So I mentioned Rockwood has those two, two and a half inch seamed together vaulted laminated roof sections. They give it like a five inch, extremely vaulted roof. Feels very nice inside. Um, the J Feather though, it has a heavier constructed roof. It weighs more, but it also holds more weight. Jayco's Magnum Trust roof system. You've probably heard me yakety yak about it just a hundred times in our videos previously. The J Feather roof holds more weight than anybody else in this class. It weighs a little more for it, but there's also some structural integrity to be said for that. We don't have structural issues on our little uh, Geo Pros. I think partially because they're so small and so light, there's not nearly the torsional stress going on. But Jayco said, we build heavy duty roofs, man. We want big heavy duty snow load roofing on this thing. And we're just gonna stick with it, even if it means a couple extra pounds. And I can respect that, especially when you start putting, you know, if you wanna start doing double kayaks or something up there. The Geo Pro, uh, Pro roof is perfectly walkable. Uh, we don't have snow load issues with them at Halet RV. In theory, if you somehow, for some reason, wanted to stack concrete bricks on top of the J Feather, I don't know why you do that, um, but you could. If you, if you did that, the J Feather would actually hold more of them. So there you go. Um, Maybe worth mentioning, because of the double vaulted roof on that Rockwood, it is steeper. It is a little more sketchy walking around on them, but obviously I've been up and down them several times in my videos, 
And as long as you're careful, stay low and go slow, you're gonna be fine. The J Feather roof vaulted on the outside, but not nearly as severely, normal walkable roof. Um, one area that uh, the Rockwood Geo Pro will definitely punch through for some folks is that it does have a standard factory inverter that runs all the outlets in that thing. The only thing it won't run is the microwave and the air conditioner. Otherwise, you can run everything on that Geo Pro off grid between propane 12 volt. It's got that 100 watt standard solar package keeping it going out there. Um, the feathers currently do not have allowances for a factory inverter. That's stuff that we could handle for you here at Halo RV if you're interested, but naturally now there's cost associated with it. Um, the, what else? Oh, the Geo Pro has the Shower Miser water saver system. Um, Jayco decided to pass on that. I think their logic was you've got the little on off switch on the shower wand. Doesn't that basically accomplish the same thing for no cost? And they instead move that cost into other things like say the Blackstone griddle, for instance. So um, I, I, I think some people are gonna give the nod to GeoPro there. I don't camp in that lifestyle. I don't personally need the shower miser system for my type of Midwestern park camping, but I know some people really, really swear by it. And that's cool. I'd be surprised if it's something we couldn't add for you here at Halet RV, but it's not a standard factory Jayco thing. Um, one interesting area here, when you're not comparing a specific floor plan, is the Geo Pros do have a more robust, wider lineup since they have been in production for a couple more years. So there is a greater variety of floor plans. That being said, if you look at the Geo Pros that 99% of people actually end up buying, those are the exact same models that Jayco is producing. I don't believe that was a coincidence. I think that's a little bit of that RV R&D that I talk about. Well, nerdism from your Uncle Josh, you already nerd right there. Um, the Wi-Fi Ranger is a thing that the Geo Pro has that the Jayco doesn't. It's cool that it's built in. Some people really get jazzed up about it. Some people don't. The, the thing is, it's a signal axle uh, access repeater point. It's basically a built-in router. There are all sorts of things that exist in the world. If that, if, if you're looking for mobile data access, there's entire companies dedicated to things like that. So I think that if you're a user looking for that, there is a way around it. It is nice that it's built right in for, uh, from the Rockwood, from the factory level. Um, window shades is, and I'm, obviously if I'm talking window shades, I'm trying to get down to some minutia points because these, t these two campers are about 95% the same. They're very similar. And I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I like that they each offer a little bit different shade of gray. You got <laughs> 50 shades of camping. <coughs> hey, what are we? Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know if you find my jokes funny, but I know it's the only thing that gets me through the day sometime. Um, the Geo Pros have roller shades wherever they can. You have to have like a metal blind by a fire source in a kitchen, by the way, for fire code. But they'll have the roll down shades and they use a lighter color. Like black roller shades would look cool, but they do typically use a lighter color um, because it will help reflect sunlight from the outside, which is smart. Jayco's doing the same thing on the windshields of their White Hawks. Actually, their roller shade has a radiant layer on the backside of it now. Brilliant. But um, again, the feathers just don't have anything like that. And they will use traditional pleated shades. They do use like blackout black shades though. So if you really wanna block the sun out in those things, you can. Um, one other major thing, and it goes along with any Jayco, is they pretty much always have the best warranty out there. They've got at least double the warranty of, as far as I know, anybody else in that category in the Jayfeather Micros. They've got that two plus three year structural coverage on that giving you more coverage and more peace of mind than anybody else. There's also little things like the, the Geo Pro has that standard, um, the Max Air vent cover built on their big vent fan right from the factory level. Easy things to add aftermarket, but again, it's nice that it is done from the factory level. And of course, the big one, pricing. How do these things stack up? Well, pretty darn similar. Everything that I've been able to see, everything that I've been advised from the factories is the two things, if you're uh, comparing an equivalent floor plan, they're pretty much right in line. One is a little cheaper here, one's cheaper there, but overall they're basically about a wash in terms of a price tag. So what's nice is it really does just kind of boil down to a little bit of visual aesthetics and specific floor plan features. And I'm going to be very interested to see how they stack up against one another this year. I'm just very glad that I'm a dealer of both products here at Halet RV. So um, again, if you, 
kind of like this. Normally I would walk out and I'd just actually put my hands on campers, but right now, given the circumstance, that just wasn't possible and available. But if you appreciate this information, kind of being able to see some hands-on things, like if there's a specific head-to-head -head segment you guys are a little more interested in learning about, I'd be willing to potentially dabble into it a little bit here. Um, again, understanding that I always try to focus on positive facts and, I, and I'm not going to start comparing what we have versus what we don't because Frankly, guys, anyone who's doing a job like mine who says they're completely unbiased, uh, uh, that, that's not true. That's that's not true at all. I, I, I have no qualms about the fact that saying, yeah, I, I'm a little bit biased in the work that I do because obviously I, I want to earn your business here at Halo RV, but that's the difference. I am willing to earn it. I'm not trying to use information to mislead you into anything. Kind of like this, I've, I've been willing to share where something's good, bad, ugly, or in between and how they stack up against one another. So nobody's completely unbiased, but I do think that we try to be as fair as we possibly can. Hopefully you can appreciate and respect the straightforward nature of something like that. And if you can, make sure you subscribe and follow our channel. So who knows, you can keep up to date on the next thing we put out here, of which we've got quite a bit coming. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet Camping, everybody.